Here's Substance Painter. I'm just going to move this window over a little bit and resize it. And this probably is your layout when you open it up the first time. You have a bunch of library shelf items here going from substances. And if you roll over, here's your materials, smart materials, mask, filters, brushes, alphas, textures, environment, and different medium. Let's just get right into this application. You're going to import your FBX model. File, New. Choose the template. What's the template? This is the layout of the images that will be used within here. Unity is a fine choice, even if you're going to go in, back into Maya or Blender. Now I'm going to stick with the Unity HD render pipeline even though I'll be going back to Maya. The document resolution, you could change this later on. It's good to start out with 2048. Why not start out with a big resolution number? And that's how many pixels the canvas will be when we're painting on the different layers. Select the model, and that's the FBX model. And this is the demo. Leaving everything else as, as the defaults and clicking OK. And the model will be imported. To navigate around this viewport, hold down the Alt key and left mouse button to orbit. Alt key, right mouse button to zoom in and zoom out. Alt key and middle mouse button to pan around. To change the angle of the light in the viewport, press down the Shift button and the right mouse button and you can rotate the light around the view. Off on the right side, over here, let me just add some separation between the menus. You can see the different material IDs here represent the different parts of the model. So this gives you a way to turn off, on, and off the different parts. But it's also a way to go paint on the model. And these names came from naming things in Maya. First thing you have to do is go to Texture Set Settings and scroll on down until you find the Bake Mesh Maps and click that button. I'm going to turn off Thickness and these are the different maps to be baked. The ID is the material IDs that are coming in from your application. Under Common Parameters, you know I could change this later, I'm just going to set to 2048 the size of the map to be baked. Since I'm not using any high resolution mesh to project onto a low resolution mesh to pick up all that extra details of normals, just click this button. Make sure you click that button. And that's all you have to do on the screen. Output size, use low poly mesh as high poly mesh. You can scrub through the other settings, but there's nothing else you have to change on the screen. Just click Bake Selected Textures, and the selected textures are these over here. And Substance just ran through the different material IDs, creating the different maps. And this will help. The creation maps helps Substance Painter paint onto the objects. All right, how to get started. Let's get started in the quickest way possible. Here's regular materials and here's smart materials. The regular materials are just the base colors usually, maybe some other parameter, while the smart materials have a lot of extra stuff to them. If I scroll on down, like this one, or this one, machinery. I'm going to roll over it. And there's my preview of it. Let's start with a regular material. I'm going to take this plastic material and I'm just going to click and drag and just drop it. And you could drop it on these different material parts that were assigned back in the 3D application. So if that's going to be my inset, and everything with that material ID has the same one now. That was an okay one. Let me select a more interesting material. 
There's stitches, but I'm not interested in stitches. Let's go to a smart material. And scrubbing for the I'm gonna scrubbing through the different thumbnails. I'm gonna select this one. Yeah, maybe this plastic instead. And I'll assign it to the main box. Two segments for the sphere. Maybe the bottom part is this red steel paint. And the top, I'll just apply steel to it. You could try out the different materials. Find the ones that you like from the list. Just as simple as drag and drop. Now, each time I'm dragging and dropping, I'm building up a list, and I'll get to that in a second. Maybe concrete. For the bottom, and this carbon fiber for the top. Going to the Layers tab, we could see what we just did. And selecting part by part, you, you can view and focus in on each of the materials that were dropped. So if I go to the box, which is this orange color, here's a folder that you can open up and close. Here's an empty layer that if I don't want that empty layer anymore, I select it and press the trash can. I'll go to the inside, which was this plain plastic. I'll select the trash can and throw it away. Let's focus in on the inside. Let's say you wanted a more interesting texture. How about this fabric on the inside? If I click and drag it and drop it right there, there's fabric, but here's my other painted material. It's still there as a layer. If you don't want it there anymore, you could select it and press the trash can to throw it away. When I was playing with the top and bottom, I created a lot of extra materials that I probably don't need. Let me select one and throw it away. Selecting and throw it away. Selecting anything from the bottom and throwing it away. Just cleaning up what's going on. So that was the top. If I go to the bottom, I should have a similar situation. Let me fold up the folders. Throwing that one away. Throwing this one away. and throwing this one away as well. While I'm here, let me go to this orange box. Let's take a look at that. Here's the folder for it. If I unfold the folder, it's made up of different things. There's a sharpen filter, there's a mask applied to it, and that mask is scraping away to reveal some dust, and below that is the orange color. If you want to change this orange color, and this will be true with most of the materials. Let's unfold that. Here's this orange color, base color. If I click here and then scroll in the properties a little lower, you should be able to find the base color information. You could change that up. Maybe you want it to be blue or green. It didn't have to be orange. It could be yellow. Let's try that with a different material going to the inside of the box and you're not good. going to fabric suit vintage here's the color top what if you click that swatch and pick red so this acts a lot like other applications that you're already used to for picking colors select the swatch up here and somewhere there should be a parameter unless it's something being generated here, luckily there's parameters, so I could change this up to blue and red. You know we haven't painted anything yet. You'll do that at the next pass at Substance Painter. Let's just get this out back into your 3D application, wired up to your shaders there, and render it out. Go to File. Let's save this first. and call this Demo 1 export your textures. We don't need the mesh. We already have the mesh waiting for us back in that 3D application. So file export textures. 
Here again, you can choose the output template. So if you want to switch it between this or universal pipeline or something else, this is the time to do it. If you scroll on up, we could see, hey, look, there's one just for Arnold. Why not just use that one if you're going back to Maya or someplace else that has Arnold? If not, use the universal pipeline or some unreal one. That will work out as well. Export type is going to be PNGs. This is where it's going to be saved. And you could choose a new export path by clicking within here, picking folder, and selecting that folder. And after you make after you select your folder and you choose your output template type, just click on export. Now you're ready to wire up all these images within your 3D application.